we have an extreme close-up here. This green part here is called the calyx, this kind of leafy green looking part. And around the outside edge you can see right here in an arc are attached these stalks. And on top of each one there's an anther or pollen sac. This flower is in the balloon stage so these haven't matured yet. After the flower opens these things will start to dry and release pollen. But at this point they haven't released any pollen at all yet. So of course we want to remove those so the, sal the flower can't self-pollinate itself. These five stalks here in the middle that go down through the center down to here where the fruit will eventually form. These are the stigma. They're sticky and the pollen will stick to those very very easily. So once a pollen grain sticks there it'll germinate and grow down this tube which is called the pistil. It'll grow down this tube and start forming a seed embryo down here. Once the tree knows that there's going to be some seeds here it will bother to grow a fruit around them because of course the point for the tree is to grow this tasty fruit so that animals will eat the fruit and transport its seeds elsewhere. That's what the whole thing's all about after all. So the first step is to collect some pollen. You want to get the flowers before they actually open. So what we're looking for is flowers that are in the what's called the balloon stage. And that's these right here. Flowers that are going to open in the next day or two. And that's what these are. They're not open yet, so no, no bugs have gotten in there and contaminated them with other pollen. Because of course how this works is the bee visits the flower or you know lots of other bugs pollinate these too. And they pick up the pollen all over the hairs on their bodies and then when they go to get nectar from another flower or pollen, they're collecting nectar and pollen both, they you know deposit that pollen so that can contaminate. So you want these blossoms that are still completely closed up. If you gather, for, for most varieties, if you gather about 10 to 25 blossoms like this, um, you'll be doing okay. Some varieties, especially crab apples, will have very small flowers with very small anthers that don't produce a lot of pollen. So you may need a little bit more, but you don't need a lot of pollen. A little bit of pollen goes a long ways when it comes to pollinating these things. Removing the pollen from the uh, blossoms is easy. I'm just going to tear off the flower petals by grabbing them kind of at the end and twisting around. And then you can use either a comb to comb off the little pollen sacs, also called anthers. Or you can clip them off with scissors if you don't have a comb. So you want to let these pollen sacs dry slowly at room temperature if possible. I've dried them in the sun in an emergency when literally like the last flower I wanted to pollinate was going to open, you know, the next day. But uh, not advised. I didn't get that much pollen. And it's best to dry them in the container that you're going to actually store the pollen in. Some kind of little jar or something that you can seal up. I've hardly used any pollen that I didn't hadn't collected that, you know, the year I was pollinating. But this year I did actually. I used some pollen from last year that I did not store very carefully. I just put it in the cupboard with everything else. And uh, it seems to have worked. So I think you could probably store it over a year pretty easily. Just make sure this is completely dry before you put the lid on and store it in a cool place. Here's some pollen I collected earlier in the season and dried. So if this will focus, you can see inside, hopefully you can see there's a fine yellow powder all inside of there. It doesn't take very much of that to pollinate a few blossoms. I'll save this till next year. Some varieties bloom very early and some bloom pretty late. So if you want to cross two apples, sometimes the timing just doesn't work out right.
This operation is pretty simple. It's a little finicky, you know, uh, fine detail work here, but it, it is a simple process. We're gonna pick out the same as we did for the pollen. We're gonna pick out the blooms that are gonna open within a day or two. This one will open tomorrow morning. This one will probably open the day after that. And this one the day after that. This one we could probably pollinate too. Anything else gets picked off right off the bat. You know, I'm gonna tag, tag this with an orange flag with the name of the, the pollen parent on it. And I wanna make sure that I know that every blossom on here was pollinated only by, by me. So anything that's not gonna get pollinated today goes. All right, so first thing we need to do is remove these petals and expose the sexual parts of the flower. Now what I'm doing is I'm gently grabbing out towards the tip of the blossoms and kind of bending them around like this until they break free from the base. Some varieties, this is really easy, like this one, and there's rarely any little pieces of petal left. Other ones, it's more difficult. What you don't wanna do while you're doing this is damage these little guys in the center because those are the female parts and those are the ones we need to, uh, to pollinate. That's called the pistol is the, the long thing and the stigma is the little sticky tip. But don't worry about those terms. I, I swear I still can't keep all those terms straight after even years of studying plants. So we wanna remove all of the anthers because it's possible that those will pollinate the flower, um, self-pollination. So the way I do that is I go around with these tiny sharp scissors and I just snip them off and I just slide in really carefully to make sure that I don't get any of the girl parts in the middle because those are not attached around the outside like this. They're attached, um, they go way down into the center of the, uh, I guess it's the ovary, you know, the part that becomes the fruit. So there you go. All the anthers are completely removed. The other way to possibly do this is Nigel Deacon has a special pair of scissors that have a notch cut out of them. And he just cuts underneath the calyx base like this and it cuts off all of those and the calyx all at once but leaves the center. So now it's time to pollinate and I'm just gonna use my finger today because I have a lot of pollen in here. I'm pollinating, this is a red fleshed apple. You notice probably how pink the blossoms are and how, how dark pink these unopened blossoms were, well that red pigment extends into the fruit as well. So this is a red fleshed variety that Albert Etter bred and I'm cross pollinating it with an apple called Sweet 16. And Sweet 16 has just crazy intense kind of candy like flavors of uh, you know cherry and bubble gum, sometimes almond. And so what I'm doing is I'm just getting a little pollen on my finger and I'm just brushing it lightly across the tips of these girl parts. You can also use, if you have less pollen and you don't want to waste any, you can use a very fine hairbrush, um, meaning a paintbrush, you know, made of actual hair uh, or you can use a blade of grass. I've used a blade of grass a lot, it works fine. There's all kinds of stuff you can use. Um, the pollen is very sticky and so are the tips of the stigmas. I mean, this system is made, made to work, so this stuff is made to stick. If you wanna make really sure that these are pollinated well, you can revisit this. Excuse me. You can revisit this. Um, you know, the day after for a day or two, if you want. I find that I get quite a bit of, quite a few seeds from just a single pollination, but occasionally I'll come back the next day and repollinate everything just to kind of uh, make sure, or, you know, I'll probably get a few more seeds. It's pretty rare to get, actually get 10 seeds out of the apple. Usually, <coughs> er, there's uh, five of these and each one is capable of producing two seeds, I think. Um, generally speaking anyway. So 
there we go. This is labeled now, and I'll know for sure that all four of these weren't pollinated by anything else. Now, if I was being super duper scientific or something, I could put a net over this, um, like a net bag, to make sure that no bees visit this flower. But I don't do that because I like to keep this simple and keep it as low input as possible. And the bees aren't interested in these flowers. There's no, um, you know, there's no petals. Like the petal is kind of like a bullseye, you know, drawing the bees in, the color and everything. There's no petals, there's no pollen. They don't look like, they look like blossoms that have already been finished and done their thing. So I don't worry about that at all. The other thing I'll do is when these get to, you know, big enough, I'll write with a Sharpie exactly what the cross is, because that way if it falls off the tree, which often happens, um, I'll know which fruits uh, were, were pollinated and with what, because this tree has pollinations by probably four different, you know, varieties of pollen. I'll mark these specifically so maybe we can follow these actual blossoms that I'm pollinating today through the whole process. Very cool, this is gonna be fun. I'm pollinating this with a different variety called Catherine, which is also an Albert Etter variety. Same guy bred both of these. And actually I wasn't gonna do this because I suspect that they may have some of the same parents, um, which would cause kind of like an inbreeding effect. But I really, really like this apple and I would like to have some of the qualities of this apple, particularly the texture, season, late season texture, and um, but also flavor. It's just an, it's a really excellent eating apple, Catherine. And so I, I'd like to get some of those traits in here. And I just thought, well, why not just make a pollination and see what happens? First things first. These are already open, so they have to go because those have already been pollinated by bees, almost no doubt. Next, pull these off. Oops, kind of broke that one. That's okay, actually. There we go. Can you see that cicada right behind the blossom there? They cut a groove in the bark and lay their eggs in it. They'll, they'll scar up these young branches, will get really scarred up from the cicadas doing that. And sometimes, pretty often actually, the branch will become so weak that it, it will break off in the wind. So I don't really like those guys too much. There we go. Pollinated today three different sets of blossoms with three different po different varieties of pollen. I'm gonna label all those and I'm gonna double label them so we can keep track of them over the next um, many years and see what happens.